check. Okay. I didn't unmute myself. All right. Good morning, everyone. Sorry about the little mix up. Uh, welcome to BC214, our course on developing the human spirit. Thank you for joining the class. Let me adjust the camera a little bit. Okay. All right. Let's pray and get started. Somebody can please pray. Father, we thank you for this day, for this time, Lord. Once again, we come to your presence and we worship you, Lord, as we're going to start our classes, Father. And Father, give us knowledge, understanding, so we can understand your word, Lord, through Pastor Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Last week, I forgot to turn the recording on, so... Uh, we couldn't provide the recording of last week's lecture, but we essentially talked about the faculties of um, um, hearing, sensing or feeling, and smell and taste, those faculties. And then uh, we talked a little bit about how we can prepare or develop our spirit and train our spiritual senses. So I'll just quickly review that. Lesson number 11. How do we uh, develop our senses? How do we keep nurturing uh, and training our spiritual senses so that we can be more attentive to God? And our goal is to be in a flow, right? It's where our hearing from God, whether through our... Whether, whether it's through hearing, feeling, or seeing, and even taste and smell, it just becomes natural to us. I mean, it's just normal. We just flow in it. How do we do that? So we said, here are some things which we know, uh, which is to fellowship with God through worship, prayer, and word. We walk in that fellowship. We also walk in quietness and communion with God, number two. Number three, our feeding on God's Word. Right? So as we spend more time meditating, feeding on um, the Word of God, our senses are going to be trained to discern good and evil. We'll be able to discern. Number four, Confession of the word. As we keep speaking the word, our faith is built up. And it takes faith to hear from God because we are stepping out of our natural and stepping into the spiritual. So every time we step out of the natural, that's faith. We have to, it requires faith. And so speaking the word, confessing the word is going to help nurture our faith, keep our faith strong. Knowing our identity uh, is going to help us move in the spiritual realm. Praying in tongues uh, is again a very important part because our spirit uh, is stirred up as you spend time praying in tongues. And then exercise these faculties, but primarily walk in love. Right? That means, yeah, we are listening, hearing from God, but most important, do it in love, in the love of God. Right? So exercise these faculties while we are walking in love and then receive spiritually through others, which we will talk about a little later, that God can stir us up through other people. So uh, we read Hebrews 5, 13 and 14, where it tells us that by reason of use, they have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Reason of use meaning they are taking part in the word of God, in the solid meat of God's word. And they are mature, and through constant use in the word, they are training their senses. So that's something we need to do, constantly be in the word. We also then talked about, or we started this part, where how do we distinguish between the voice of the spirit and the voice of our soul? Right. So that's where we kind of paused last week. 
because our soul which is our mind will and emotions also has its own thoughts ideas pictures things are coming in our own soul our minds and doesn't always have to be bad or evil it's just that it is our our thoughts it can be good thoughts also but it's our thoughts like if you feel a, if you see a person who's feeling sad or maybe you know they're going through a difficulty. So then what? You want to go and encourage them. You want to speak a word of comfort. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a good thing. But it is something we want to do, which is a good thing. We must do it. Nothing wrong with that. But what we are trying to say is, what if the Holy Spirit is giving you a specific word and saying, go and speak this word to that person. Right? How do we differentiate between what is from our soul and what is from the Holy Spirit? Now, we have good thoughts in our own soul, in our own mind, which is good, nothing wrong. But we want to hear clearly from the Spirit. How do we differentiate it? So here are some things. So just some thoughts here. First is to quiet our soul so that we can listen to the Holy Spirit. So say, mind, okay, I know you're a good mind, but you keep quiet. I want to listen to God. I want to listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling me in my spirit. So quiet your mind. Now, especially if our mind is troubled, disturbed, it's a little difficult. Your mind is agitated or disturbed about something, it's a little difficult. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's a little difficult because your mind is also making a lot of noise. You know, it's very disturbed about something. So best thing is quiet your minds. Be calm. So Bible tells us, you know, be still and know. Be still and know. You know from God what is of the things of the Spirit. Be still and know. Another important thing is which I find very useful is. You have a question? Yes, Pastor. Go ahead. So, like uh, when we say quiet our mind, uh, is it uh, like uh, being in a place of uh, uh, passiveness, like if not like not thinking anything, but just making it empty, not processing anything, or just. We have to think of like, okay, what's God is, we have to engage in that way. Mm. It's good that you ask the question, so we can clarify. So when we say quiet your mind, what we should not do, it's not saying empty your minds. That means like, sit down and don't think about anything. That's a bad position, because when we empty our mind, then that's, we are actually opening that mind to the devil to come and interfere. So our mind is important. It must be in our control. You don't just open, you know, we don't just empty your mind, we keep your mind blank, don't think about anything. I don't know, don't do that. When you say calm your mind means coming to a place of stillness or quietness. Where? Example. Suppose I am facing a financial problem. My mind could be working on, suppose example, I need 10,000 rupees. Mind could work on, maybe I will ask John, maybe I'll ask Paul, maybe I'll ask Mary. And if Mary says no, I'll ask so and so. My mind is thinking, where can I get that 10,000 rupees? So my mind is working. I'll try like this, I'll try like that, I'll go to the bank, I'll do this, I'll do that. You know, so quiet. Smile. Don't worry about it. Instead, when you say quiet your mind, you focus on one promise. So when you're thinking about money, example, I, I need 10,000 rupees. When that thought comes to my mind, instead of Going off thinking where all these other things, I say, my God will supply all my needs. 
according to his riches in glory. That is it. So I quiet my mind now. By thinking upon the Lord, but knowing who God is, He is my provider. Instead of worrying, worrying, worrying about how am I going to get, oh, if I don't get 10,000 rupees and I don't do this, or else this will happen, that will happen. Or not. My God will supply all my needs. And then I pray. I say, God, I want to know what you are saying. How you want to provide for me. I know I need this money. I'm quietening my mind. I'm looking to you. I'm looking at your promise. But now I want to listen to what you say that I should do. God, is there anything you want me to do to receive your provision? Uh, so I'm listening to God now. And you see, sometimes he might say, do something. Sometimes he might say, just be still. To each in a different situations, he gives, you know, depending on the situation, he'll, he'll guide us. We have to follow his guidance. Yeah. So that was, that's what we mean by quieting your mind. It's not making your mind blank, not making your mind passive, but you're being still and know. Be still and know. You know, still your mind upon the promise of God. Like it says, Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep him in perfect peace, his mind that is set on you. So you're putting your mind on God. Instead of being worried, being anxious, troubled, disturbed. And then you're listening. Okay, God, what is God saying? God, is there anything you want me to do? So I'm praying in tongues, maybe praying in tongues and listening. Anything, any word, any picture, any impression, any knowing that's coming in my spirit at this time. So pray. So God may speak at that time. And we follow. Question? One more question. Like, uh, before that, uh, we seen that like to hear from God, we need faith. Yes. So is it necessary for all the times? Because... Uh, I like I was reminded of one situation where uh, God called Abraham, but he is an unbeliever. He don't know God, but he still heard his voice. So, good question. There are times when God will speak on His own prerogative. That means He will, as sovereign God, He will speak. You know, He will send a word to somebody. Send an angel to somebody. But that is the exception. For us as believers, our normal position must be, God, I want to hear your voice. What are you saying? We are actively listening. Sometimes we may not be listening. Or we say, example, we are sleeping. God gives a dream. Now, that is God taking the initiative to give you that dream. He can do that, of course. But when you are awake, we must be listening. We must be in a position to keep paying attention to God. So, as believers, it's both ways. I must be listening. And God can speak of His own. right? So, in order to listen, I must have faith. Faith, yeah. The next thing that helps is to know that the first voice is God's voice. What does that mean? And why is that important? So when you see, God is a God who does, who speaks. He's not dumb. Like he does, he's not like, I'll be quiet. No, normally, he's speaking to us. He's, he's, he, he, he wants to speak to us. Like a father wants to speak to his children. So that is normal. It's normal for God to speak. So when we say, oh God, I need some guidance, I, I need to know what to do, it's normal for God to speak to you, for you to hear from God. So uh, the problem is, God speaks, a word comes into our spirit, or we send something, 
or a picture God uses to communicate to us. But then we get scared and we put it aside. Because our mind kicks in. Where did that picture come from? Is it really from God? We begin to reason. So God's voice, then our reasoning comes. Because we have to process whatever we hear in the spirit. We have to process with our mind. And then usually we talk ourselves out of the voice of God. That means we, we tend to say, oh, that cannot be God, may not be God, might not be God, maybe it was not God. And by the time we think about those things, we say, forget it, maybe I'll leave it aside. So that's why we're saying the first voice is God's voice. So you have to take it. Go with it. It takes faith to pay attention to. So you ask God, He speaks. When you sense something coming, the first voice, His word coming, take it. Yes, you have to judge it. I'm not saying should or not. We should judge it. But be confident of what the first voice. The first voice is God's voice. Okay, so in that sense, I'm saying that uh, I'm making this. The first voice is God's voice. Another statement is get out of your mind to flow with the spirit. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't use our mind. We have to use our mind. But the important thing is there will be times when God gives us instructions that may be beyond logic. That may be not necessarily something you like to do. Right? So that's where we have to learn to get out of our mind. That means go beyond what you're comfortable with or what is logical to you. As long as you know God has spoken, He's given me an instruction, He's given me a word, let me just do it. Right? So in order to flow with the Spirit, I'm not saying don't use our mind, but there will be times that we have to walk by faith. That is, it's beyond logic, beyond reason, you know. So, uh, God will give us those kinds of instructions. We must be ready. And last instruction is, if you're unsure, talk to somebody about it, validate it. You know, check it with the Word of God. Check it with somebody else, especially if it's a very big decision. Check it with somebody who knows to discern whether it's from God or not. And then you can learn through that. You know, that when they affirm, yeah, this is God, speaking to you, and then it, it encourages you to listen more. So also keep in mind, last point here is that God can touch our soul and body. So there will be times where you feel something in your emotions or you feel something in your body, and God is speaking. So the, this course is emphasizing the human spirit, but don't neglect the fact that God can touch you directly or touch your emotions directly or touch your body directly be aware uh, be open to that as well so let me see if there any questions uh, on lesson 11 before we start lesson 12 any questions here from uh, students online any questions on lesson 11 Okay, let's go to lesson number 12, which is also a very important lesson about what the, the Lord, the Bible calls us to do, is to walk in the Spirit. That means every day, every moment, you and I are supposed to be walking in the spirit. Though we live in the flesh, that means we do have a natural life where you're eating, sleeping, resting, bathing, all those, the natural things, taking care of the natural body. Though we live in the flesh, 
We are called to walk in the Spirit. So the Christian life, the life of a believer, really, is a walk in the Spirit, or walk of the Spirit. It's a spiritual walk. And in the process, yeah, because we are living on this earth, we are taking care of the natural man, we have to. But we always have to walk in the Spirit. So we want to understand what that is. Let us go to Galatians 5 first. We'll read both these passages. Uh, it's probably familiar, but let's read both these passages first. We'll read Galatians 5, 16 to 26, and then we'll read Ephesians 5. And we'll explain this. I think this is very important uh, for us as believers. Galatians 5, 16 to 26. And uh, somebody can read it, please. Galatians 5, verse 16. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are, not in, they are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. The act of sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idol, uh, adultery, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, decision, and envy, drunkenness, and the like, I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Therefore, who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passion and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become Concited, provoking, and envying each other. Mm. So, notice these three statements the Apostle Paul makes here. Verse 16, he says, and I'm, I'm reading from the New King James, it says, he says, walk in the Spirit. Verse 18, he says, if you are led by the Spirit. And then, Verse 25, let us live in the Spirit. So he's saying, walk in the Spirit, be led by the Spirit, live in the Spirit. I mean, our whole life, the way we are living our natural life, it's coming from the Spirit. Walk. To walk means, walk in the Spirit means, I am walking according to him or aligned to him so example good example will be like we sometimes as children we used to play three-legged race two people they, they'll tie the two legs together and they'll make if they have a running race the only way you can run is if you are moving the same leg at the same time if you're moving ulta have finished you will fall can I, it won't happen. So you have to imagine like that. You, your leg is tied to the leg of the Holy Spirit. Just imagine. I'm going to say things seriously. Just imagine that. If we have to actually walk, when he puts the, his step forward, we also have to put our step forward. You're walking aligned to him, walking in line with him. Right? So walk in the Spirit means we are walking aligned to Him, living our life in a way that He is directing us. But we are walking together. We are led by Him. I mean, we are saying, Holy Spirit, what are you saying? What, are you, what is your guidance? What are you directing me? We are led by the Spirit. 
and we are living. That means our whole life is flowing from the Holy Spirit. So Paul is saying, look, if you live like this, then you are not under the law. Why? Because if you're under the Holy Spirit, if you're under the Holy Spirit, you don't need the law to tell you what's right and wrong. Holy Spirit is telling you what is right and wrong. And the Holy Spirit is always producing the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, this, this, this. So against these things, there is no law. There's not, no law saying love is not good, peace is not good, joy is not. There's no against such things. There is no law. I mean, the fruit of the Spirit do not contradict the law. They fulfill the law. So when you're in the Spirit, you don't need the law. So you're not under the law, he says. Right? Verse 18. If you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. You don't need to live by the law. You're living by the Spirit. And whatever the Holy Spirit produces will not contradict the law. It fulfills the law and more. But if we don't live according to the Spirit, what will happen? We will live according to the flesh. Then we will produce all these other things he mentions here in verses 19 and 19 to 21. And he says, if you practice those things, you'll not enter the kingdom. You'll not inherit the kingdom. So as believers, we have to live in the Spirit. We have to walk in the Spirit. We have to be led by the Spirit. That means our whole natural life is governed by the Holy Spirit. Through our human spirit. That means my human spirit is subject to the Holy Spirit. And my human spirit under the Holy Spirit is then governing my natural life. And if I, if you and I as believers, we live like that, we will we'll bring out the fruit of the Spirit and we will, we, we will not contradict the law. We will have more than the law. And we will overcome the flesh. We will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So, this is walking in the Spirit. Ephesians 5, Paul explains, I mean, he's saying the same thing, but he puts it in a little different way, so it's useful to look at that. Ephesians 5, 17 to 21. Somebody could read that for us, please. Ephesians 5, 17 to 21. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks. Always for all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. Mm. Fear of Lord. So, he's saying, verse 17, don't be foolish, understand the will of God. And in that context, he's saying, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. So, similar. Similar but different language. To the Galatians, he said, Walk in the Spirit, be led by the Spirit, live in the Spirit. To the Ephesians, he's saying, Be filled with the Spirit. Same thing, just different terminology. Be filled with the Spirit. And he's comparing that to a person who is drunk with wine. So, there we are getting a new picture. What does it mean to be full of the Spirit? Compare it with a man who is drunk. A man who is drunk, he is actually under the influence of something else, the alcohol. And so his behavior is affected by the alcohol. So here, instead of, he's using that as a background and says, okay, you now be filled with the Spirit. That means, be under the influence of the Holy Spirit to such an extent that your life, your behavior is affected by the Holy Spirit. So to live in the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit simply means 
we are so submitted to the Holy Spirit that our life, our natural life, our behavior is influenced and governed by the Holy Spirit. That's what it means. So, what is a Spirit-filled life? The Spirit-filled life is a life that is fully under the influence of the Holy That is a Spirit-filled life. And he tells us in detail, okay, what will it look like? Verse 19, 20, 21. You'll be overflowing with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. You'll be making melody in your heart to the Lord. So that's the first thing. Your heart is in that communion, in that worship with God. Verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So your heart is always thankful. So this is the characteristic of a life that is under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Your, your heart is overflowing with songs, with praise to God. It's, your heart is overflowing with gratitude, thankfulness to God in the name of our Lord Jesus. And third characteristic, verse 21, submitting to one another. That means you're walking in submission or you're walking in humility towards everyone, to one another. So three characteristics of the Spirit-filled life. How can you say somebody, how can you know that you are filled with the Spirit, you're under the influence? Well, are you overflowing with praise to God, your heart? Are you overflowing with gratitude to God? And are you overflowing with humility, submitting to one another? There's no like, oh, I'm better than you, you're bigger than me. I'm like, no, no. Just submit to one another. Walking in humility before one another. Then you can say you are actually under the influence of the Holy Spirit. You're being led by the Spirit. You're walking in the Spirit. You're living in the Spirit. And in this passage, he is saying, he's connecting this to verse 17. You'll understand the will of God. That means you'll know what the mind of God, you'll know what God wants you to do when you're living like this. In Galatians, he was talking, the focus was on you will crucify the flesh, you will do more than what the law requires, you'll be manifesting the fruit of the Spirit. Here, you'll be walking according to the will of God. You'll be walking like this. So this is an important part of the Spirit-filled life. The human spirit living or being submitted to the Holy Spirit. So how do we do this practically? Uh, I just put three points here. One is commune with the Holy Spirit. Be in constant touch with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I submit myself to you. Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, what are you saying? Holy Spirit, you know, you're walking in communion. In your Inside you, you're communing with them. So you're always conscious of Him being with you. And you're walking always in submission to Him. So communing, talking to Him. Holy Spirit, what are you saying? Lord, I need your guidance. What should I do here, God? What is the right thing to do? So you're communing with Him. Then you stay yielded to Him. So when you sense His presence, when you sense His leading, uh, and sometimes you may not sense his presence or leading, but you are intentionally doing what is what you know is pleasing to the Holy Spirit. That is living yielded to him. Even when you don't sense, even when you don't feel. You say, I know the Holy Spirit likes this and he doesn't like that. So I will avoid what he doesn't like and I will do what I know he likes. That is yielding to the Holy Spirit. So you live in that place of always doing what pleases the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't quench the Holy Spirit. So you're living in that you know, place of, I don't want to grieve him. I don't want to suppress him. I want him to be talking to me. And, right? and uh, the third thing we can do is to fast, to silence and subdue the flesh. Right? So fasting can take on many forms. You can fast food. Uh, it's okay, I'm not going to eat food. 
subdue the flesh. You can also fast the things that you like to do. Stay away from things that you want to do, like to do. You fast that. Stay. Oh, I'm not going to do it. So why? You're subduing the flesh. Right? Example, if you're spending a lot of time on the phone doing, I don't know what. Well, so okay, I'm not going to do that. You're fasting that. Staying away from it. Or anything else you know, that, that we tend to do, which we know, okay, maybe it's not useful. It's not, if it is sin, definitely we don't want to do it. But some things may not be sin, but may not be useful. Fast. You're silencing your soul. You're silencing the flesh. And it keeps us submitted to the Holy Spirit. So you live like that every day. Questions? Sorry, stay yielded to the Holy Spirit. How practically, like, we can see like that? Like, I mean, yielded means like being submissive, submissive. For, for everything. Yeah. Like, doing doing what God pleases, right? You said that point. Uh, like, how we can take that? Like, being, I mean, we have to please God in the sense. Whatever we do, we should do good in the sense of like. Uh, how to know that what pleases God? Yeah. Like there are there are some things which pleases human beings. Right. We may think like it pleases God. And we may not know some of the things what pleases God. Like we, we have the human knowledge and human mm -hmm. mind, right? So how do we know what pleases God? First, it's the word of God, right? Uh, in the word. The word of God, the Bible. Uh, God has clearly said, okay, this is what he's pleased with. This is what he's not pleased with. So first we walk in submission to what he has already said in his word. So I know, example, if I walk with pride, if I have selfish ambition, if I have selfish interests, if I am seeking to promote myself, God has clearly said in his word, I don't like these things. So I know God doesn't like that. If doing, doing that will grieve the Holy Spirit, so I stay away from it. If I am going to do something, I'll catch myself. No, that's self-promotion. Stay away. That is selfish ambition. Stay away. Don't do it. Right. So a lot of um, uh, instruction is already given to us in his word. We just obey that, follow that, right? So that's the first way. We stay yielded to the Holy Spirit, obey the words. Second is, there will be times the Holy Spirit gives us special direction. He promises us, do something. So example, um, maybe, you know, uh, somebody is there, they come and share some need. And the Holy Spirit prompts you in your spirit. Okay, you give him that money that he needs. Thousand rupees, five thousand, whatever. You give it to him. So you feel that in your spirit. Holy Spirit is prompting you. Now I have to yield. My mind or my flesh will say, Oh, no, 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 I want it. I want to go do something with it. Some whatever. But I know suddenly that thought has come in my mind. I need to give it to him. I feel impressed to give it. I know Holy Spirit is telling me. So now what must I do? I must yield to that. Right? So that is the next way, which is I yield to the leading, the prompting of the Spirit of God. So first one is walking. I do those things that are pleasing. Second is following is leading. As he prompts, as he speaks, I say, okay, I will do that. Then I'm following is leading. So that way, we are always staying yielded to the Spirit. We are not grieving Him, fetching Him. So then we can walk in the Spirit. Okay, let me just answer this question in the chat. Uh, Nina, under the point, get out of your mind to flow with the Spirit, the instruction, revelation of the Spirit of God, which don't fit with our own way of thinking, reasoning. A way we can be sure 
it's from the Spirit of God would be if it's aligned with God's Word. Or is this talking of anything else? Yeah, so first point, so getting out of our mind, yeah, we need to check that it's aligned with the Word of God, definitely. The Holy Spirit will lead us aligned to the Word of God. But what we were trying to emphasize is, while the leading is aligned to the Word of God, it could also be against our own logic. So example, like giving something out of our need, right? So going back to that same, same example of uh, the Holy Spirit is prompting me to give some money to help that person. Now, that is biblical, very biblical, right? It's biblical for us to help some, those in need, especially those of the household of faith. So it's a very biblical thing. But maybe I also have a need or maybe a desire to buy something with that. So the, this particular leading is against my mind. So I need to get out of my mind now, go beyond my own logic to follow what the Holy Spirit is leading. So that would be one example. Sometimes it would be, be just a you know, step of faith. The Holy Spirit is leading us to do something we've never done before. Uh, and then we follow through with what the Holy Spirit is leading. Right? Sometimes you cannot validate that with the Word of God. For example, if the Holy Spirit is prompting me, saying, today I want you to call so and so. Now, I cannot go and check with the Word of God. Uh, yeah, God's, tells, God's Word tells us to be at peace with all people, to live in peacefully. But I cannot get a specific scripture whether I should call so and so. So uh, I cannot validate necessarily with the Word of God. But there may be something in my mind saying, God, but he might be very busy or he may be traveling, whatever. I don't know what he's doing. That's my mind. So I say, okay, I feel prompted. So I will still call. I will still reach out, even though it may be against uh, my natural thinking. So that's just an example. Yeah. I hope that helps. Uh, Ravli, your question? Um, hi, Pastor. I have a follow-up question on uh um, uh, we were talking about uh, yielding to the Holy Spirit in order to uh, get directions from um, from Him. Um, so while we are doing that, uh, so how do we persist and endure for a long time? Sometimes uh, first first thought comes to my mind is, are we doing it just we are getting something from God? Or that is the lifestyle that we need to carry as a believer. Uh, it's not just we get something from God. If we are doing it, the second part is, um, how do we endure a needed life? Because even though you don't uh, get answers immediately or for a longer period of time, what you're expecting. Yeah. So like we said, this is the normal Christian life, right? The normal Christian life uh, is a life that is yielded to the Holy Spirit. So that's how all of us have to live normally, which is we live in the Spirit, we walk in the Spirit, we are led by the Spirit. So it's normal. Whether I need some guidance or not, we always live like this. You can, you can, you can. Compare it with how, what Jesus said. Jesus said, I always do those things that please the Father. Right? So uh, Jesus, that's how he always lived. I always do those things that please him, please the Father. So uh, that's, um, that's John chapter 8 and verse 29. And Jesus says, he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. For I always do those things that please him. So that's the normal way he lived. He always did. So that's what, what pleased the Father. So that's what we, how we should live. We always live in the Spirit. We always walk and are led by the Spirit. We always do live this life yielded to the Spirit. It's a normal life. And in that process, a lot of things are happening, which is one, we are overcoming the flesh. We are bearing the fruit of the Spirit. We are living in a place 
that is pleasing to God. And of course, we can hear from God. We receive guidance from God. Right? So that's the normal Christian life. The second part of the question is, what if we don't hear, we're not hearing something for a long time? Then it means that God just wants us to keep doing whatever we are doing. I mean, his last, keep, stay with this. So you can think about it like this. Stay with his last instruction until he gives you the next instruction. So if you're not hearing something new, it just means, hey, keep doing what he told you the last time. Keep following him. Keep whatever he's taught you till now. Follow his instruction. And you'll receive a new instruction when he knows it's the right time to speak that to you, to speak that to us. Right? So if I'm saying, okay, God, tell me what do you want me to do next? And I'm not hearing anything. It just means, what did he tell you last? Keep doing it. Stay faithful. And then at the right time, he will speak. He'll get you, he'll give you the next instruction. So that's generally what we do. Just uh, stay faithful uh, until you get a and you hear from God until he gives you a new direction. Of course, during all that time, he is still speaking, but he might be speaking to you about other things. Might be speaking, you know, God is always speaking, but he might be speaking to you about other things, not specifically about that one thing that you're saying, God, tell me what to do. He's always speaking, he's always giving revelation, he's always giving insight, he's always, you know, teaching us, training us. But for that particular instruction, you wait, and then he will speak. He, at the right time, he will always come through, giving us the instruction we need. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So we'll pause here for today. Uh, we probably will take maybe, uh, I think, two more classes to finish up the rest, right? Um, the rest of the content, and then we will um, uh, be done. We have uh, the seven functions of the spirit and uh, how how to receive from uh, some, how to impart and how to receive. So we will finish that in two more lectures and we shall complete the course. And we'll close out with one final assessment uh, for the course. Okay? All right, somebody can close in prayer and dismiss us, please. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time, oh God. Thank you for teaching us from your word, oh God. Father, help us, oh God, to be led by the Spirit, Lord. Walk in the spirit humbly, Lord God, and not lean on our own understanding, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, to commit our ways, our thoughts, and all that is of us into your hands, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are teaching us, you're guiding us, you're enabling us by your own spirit, O oh God. The Holy Spirit is given to each of us. Thank you, Lord God. Help us to follow. We commit each of us into your hands. Lead us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. See you again next week. Bless. Bye now.